Hello kids, today's video lecture continues our study of second wave civilizations and will take us to East Asia, China specifically, and examines two important ruling dynasties, the Qin and Han empires. When we study empires, we need to focus on some important key factors, including how the empires consolidated themselves, that is to say, how they came to power, what were their major accomplishments or lasting legacies, and finally, what brought about the demise of the empire. This is what we will focus on for the Qin and Han empires. The Qin dynasty came to power in 221 BCE. This followed a period in Chinese history after the fall of the Zhou dynasty, known as the Warring States period, which lasted from around 250 to 220 BCE. During this time, various Chinese states fought each other for control. The one who emerged victorious was the king of the Qin state, a man named Yin Zheng. After he defeated his enemies and thwarted an assassination attempt, in 221 BCE, Ying proclaimed himself Qin Shi Huangdi, or First Emperor. Although he ruled for only 11 years, he paved the way for a unified China. The basis for the name China comes from Qin. To consolidate his power, Emperor Qin focused on weakening the power of the nobility by moving them to the Qin capital, in essence keeping them hostage where he could keep an eye on them. He also ruled that civilians had to surrender all weapons, and Qin organized an administrative bureaucracy by dividing the empire into 36 provinces that were ruled by people appointed by him. This is similar to the bureaucracy used by the Persian Empire. To govern the empire, Qin adopted the philosophy of legalism, which provided for strict laws and harsh punishments for anyone who broke them. No criticism of the government was tolerated, and Qin ordered the burning of any books that did not deal with practical matters such as agriculture or technology. There is a rumor that he also had 450 Confucian scholars buried alive. Between burning books and burying teachers, Qin began to standardize Chinese writing, language, weights, measurements, and currency. This type of standardization is important in unifying an empire. Imagine if every state in the U.S. had its own measurements and standards of currency. If a pound of broccoli costs $2.99, but no other state uses pounds or dollars, it would be very difficult to buy broccoli. The point of this example is that you should eat more broccoli. Chin went so far as to standardize the length of the axles on wagons so that the wheel ruts in the roads were the same distance apart. This sounds a little picky, but think about how much easier it was to travel because of it. To demonstrate his power, Chin organized two massive building projects. First was the Great Wall of China. More accurately, he added on to it and connected parts that had already been built by earlier dynasties. Second, and only recently discovered in 1974, was his great tomb. Construction on the tomb began during the Warring States period and continued for 35 years until Qin's death. Thousands of laborers were conscripted or forced to work on the tomb. Many of them were worked to death, and in order to keep the location of the tomb secret, any surviving workers were killed and buried with the emperor. Inside the tomb is an army of thousands of terracotta soldiers to protect him in the afterlife. No two soldiers are identical. Archaeologists have located his mausoleum, but have not yet uncovered his actual body, since it's reported that not only is it decorated with rivers and oceans made from mercury, but it's also booby-trapped. Qin died in 210 BCE, and he was succeeded by an inept son who was soon overthrown in 206 BCE by the man who established the Han Dynasty which lasted for about 400 years. Although Qin's rule only lasted 11 years, he paved the way for the Han Dynasty, who continued and built on his legacy, including a strong central government, organized bureaucracy, and extensive imperial expansion. It was under the Han Dynasty that East Asia began to interact with the rest of Eurasia thanks to its expansion and support of the Silk Road's trading network. The most well-known Han Emperor was Emperor Wu Di, who ruled from 140 to 86 BCE. Under Wu Di, the empire reached its greatest size. 
He also replaced the strict legalism of the Qin dynasty by adopting Confucianism as the official philosophy of the state. Confucianism was the basis for a state educational system which relied on an examination system to train salaried state administrators. In theory, this established a meritocracy where advancement depended not on your social status but on your abilities. The Han emperors organized a complex state bureaucracy where the empire was divided into 10 kingdoms. Kingdoms were further divided into 83 commanderies, which were divided into at least 1,587 prefectures. Prefectures were further divided into districts, and districts were divided into wards, each ruled by a state-trained bureaucrat. I'll never ask you to describe the specifics of the Han administrative structure, but you should know that it was the most complex and organized administrative bureaucracy at the time. An impressive list of technological achievements made during the Han Dynasty includes the development of the world's first wheelbarrow, a seismometer which measured the strength of earthquakes, Han astronomers first observed Halley's Comet, and the development of blast furnaces used for making iron. Perhaps, most importantly, was that Han China was the first to invent and use paper. The ramifications of the use of paper are too extensive to sum up in this lecture. But for comparison, by the 3rd century, the use of paper was widespread throughout China. It did not reach the Arab world until the 7th century, and did not reach Europe until the 12th century. Like other empires, the Han Dynasty fell. Due to corruption and infighting within the government and a series of natural disasters including locust swarms and very devastating floods, many people throughout the empire began to feel that the Han rulers had lost the mandate of heaven. To add to Han troubles, Taoists demanding equal land distribution started an uprising known as the Yellow Turban Uprising from 184 to 205. By the year 220, the Han Dynasty was no more. That's it for today. Zaijian. By the way, that's Chinese for see you later.